Hi, my name is Kelly, and I get to share some scripture with you today. Today I'm going to be reading from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. But first, I want to give a little backdrop to the story that I'm going to be reading with you. Um, Acts chapter 10 opens up with a man named Cornelius. He's a Gentile. And Cornelius is a man who is a God-fearing man. And he has a vision of an angel coming to him and saying, the Lord has seen your love for him. Send for a man named Peter. And Peter is staying um, at a friend's house. And Peter himself has a vision as well. He has a vision of the Lord who he sees this cloak and it's sent down from heaven and it has all different kinds of animals on it. And God says to him, Peter, get up, kill these animals and eat them. Some of these animals were what would be called ceremonially clean and some were ceremonially unclean um, animals that people in the Old Testament were told not to eat. So Peter says, I'm not going to do it. So God tells him three times, Peter, get up, kill these animals and eat them. And he doesn't do it. And at the end of it, the Lord says, do not call anything that I have called clean, unclean. And then Peter wakes up from this vision or finishes this vision, doesn't really understand what it means. And the men that Cornelius had sent to find Peter have now arrived at Peter's house. So they come in and explain to him that they're there. God had warned Peter also, these men are going to come to your house um, accept them in, I've sent them. So these guys come and they explain to Peter that their master is Cornelius and, um, that he sent for them. So Peter goes, but when Peter gets to Cornelius's house, he explains to Cornelius that this is a big no, no. Um, up to this point, Gentiles were not allowed to come and stay or Jews were not allowed to come and stay at a Gentile's house. Peter says to Cornelius in verse 28, of chapter 10, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile, but God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you've sent me? So Peter now realizes the meaning of this vision was not necessarily talking about meat that he should eat or should not eat that's clean or unclean. God was referring to people that were seen as clean or unclean, that the gospel through Jesus, that God has called all people clean. Anyone who comes to know him is made clean, um, not just those who are Jews. So Cornelius then shares with Peter his vision and explains why he sent for Peter. And he said, um, you know, after Cornelius said, after I received this vision, I sent for you immediately, verse 33. And it was good of you to come. Now we're all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. So boom, we just dropped it right in Peter's lap, right? What do you have to say? So then we're going to dive into verse 34 now. And this is what Peter says to Cornelius and to all the people that are in Cornelius's home. Um, this is what he says. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Isn't that incredible? So what Peter gives to this man who fears the Lord and is a Gentile, he gives him the gospel. He talks about Jesus's life, his death, his resurrection, how Jesus was given dominion over the living and the dead, and 
how forgiveness of sins is offered to anyone and everyone. Now, even though this isn't necessarily within our scripture to go over, the best part for me is in verse 44. This is right after Peter gives the speech that we just read. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. They all received the Lord. What's incredible to me about that, and Cornelius, Cornelius ended up being the first recorded Gentile to receive Jesus. Isn't that incredible? And Paul talks about that too, the mystery of Christ. And he actually in Ephesians 3, 6 says that the mystery of Christ is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members of one body and shares together in the promise of Christ Jesus. So Jesus is for all. He's for everyone. He's for anyone. He's for them, right? We all have a them in our life, whether we realize it or not. It's really struck home with me and just really has me thinking, who are the people that, you know, we either, that I either blatantly avoid or think that they don't need anything or, but mostly what it is for me is it's people that I just don't think of. They're overlooked and I don't realize that I'm doing it. And um, that's big. That's a, that's a no-no. I need to understand that salvation is for everyone. And that's what Peter was sharing with Cornelius here in this beautiful story. So I'd love to close with us in prayer and just ask that the Lord would continue to reveal to us who those people are that are close within our reach, but are out of our sight and out of our prayers. And, um, but that aren't out of reach for Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for who you are. Thank you for saving me. I'm a Gentile. Thank you for coming for me. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, I ask now that you would just be gracious to all of us, gracious in showing us and revealing to us the people that we are overlooking, the people that you have not forgotten, but that maybe have slipped past my own mind, our own minds. And I thank you for what you've done for us through your salvation. You are so good to us. And I thank you that you gave your life for us. In Jesus' name, amen. May you remember today that you are not forgotten and that God loves you enough to remind you of who maybe you are forgetting, <laughs> who I am forgetting. Take care.